This week, the House of Representatives passed the Respect for Marriage Act, which would guarantee federal protections for same-sex and interracial marriages, 258 to 169. It now heads to President Biden's desk for signature. The legislation was spearheaded in the Senate by Wisconsin's Tammy Baldwin, the first openly gay elected to the Senate, gay person elected to the Senate, excuse me. It is no doubt a win for LGBTQ rights, but the bill does have its limitations. Notably, it allows religious organizations to deny services to LGBTQ couples according to their personal beliefs. Joining me now to discuss this and much more is Democratic Congressman Mondaire Jones of New York. Congressman, it's always great to see you. Uh, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Your thoughts on the Respect for Marriage Act. It's great to be with you, Eamon. And this is an incredible achievement. I'm really proud of what we've been able to do in the United States Congress. We even got a filibuster-proof majority over in the Senate. When does that happen? And this is to do something that, when I was growing up, I never imagined was possible, which is ensure marriage equality for all the states that currently allow same-sex and interracial marriages to be performed under state law. Uh, I'm really excited about this. We've got a lot of more work to do. Uh, you mentioned uh, some of the challenges. Another challenge is that this still does not ensure marriage equality in every single state in the union. And we've got to go further than what we've done thus far for that reason. I think some of us who have been following the story closely say the alarm bell started to go off um, for the push to pass the Respect for Marriage Act after Justice Thomas's concurring opinion uh, when the court overturned Roe versus Wade, because there was this part where he said the court should revisit cases that establish the right to same sex marriages and relationships. And look, you know, we know this country well. That is a signal to somebody out there to bring litigation forward that could bring its way up to the Supreme Court. Are you afraid the court will, in fact, take that step or try to take that step now that Clarence Thomas has signaled that he wants to see that, more or less? In fact, that was the impetus for this legislation. We saw in Justice Thomas's concurring opinion in Dobbs that there are going to be a number of other rights that are taken away from millions of Americans in the same way that this far right 6 3 supermajority on the court stripped away the fundamental right to an abortion that had existed for 50 years in our Constitution. Uh, and so we wanted to get ahead of the problem, and we did that. But we also know that there are other things on the chopping block the right to contraception. Uh, the right to so many other things that we simply take for granted in our everyday lives. These are the problems that you have because the right has stacked the court with radical extremists. Mitch McConnell, for example, denying Obama the ability to appoint Merrick Garland to the Supreme Court. Now we've got a 6-3 hyperpartisan majority that does not care about its own precedents even. And we see that in terms of uh, relief that it's provided, as well as marriage equality in the form of Obergefell and other things that it's been doing. We expect these decisions to be rolled back in, in the next few years, unfortunately. Let's shift to the National Defense Authorization Act. The House passed the N, uh, ND, NDA, excuse me, this week, and it set a record $858 billion next year for military spending. I believe $45 billion more than what the White House was asking for in this budget. Was that necessary? No, it wasn't. You know, I hear a lot, a lot of folks concerned about inflation in this country. I share their perspective. And in the same way that I voted against the NDAA last year, I voted against it this time around. The NDAA is a holiday for lobbyists in Washington on K Street. It has so many things in it that have nothing to do with the defense of our country. Uh, and it's why I've shown the political courage to vote against it time and time again. Americans want to make sure, obviously, that our military has the resources that it has. But as you just mentioned, we just gave, in the form of the NDAA, $45 billion more than the president even requested. And we all know that the president is going to request more than he already needs so that he has some extra uh, and some flexibility to, to do with it as he will to protect our borders and to defend our nation against threats, both foreign and domestic. Uh, but what we see here is the fact that special interests have a chokehold over the United States Congress. And we have to start showing the political courage to get away from that. 
Uh, Congressman, before we go, I want to discuss your time in Congress. Uh, you talk about political courage. Unfortunately, uh, your time as a congressman is coming up, I think, probably because of political courage and the way you decided to run your race uh, and where you decided to run it. But let me ask you, what is your proudest moment of your time in office? What do you hope to do next? I, I appreciate that opportunity. Obviously, redistricting has been a nightmare in New York State in particular, and it cost us the House. Uh, which has been to the detriment of our democracy. I've done a lot of things as a fresher member of Congress. One of the things I'm most proud of is having bridged the divides that existed in our caucus at the time to pass the largest investment in our nation's infrastructure that we've seen in generations. Uh, and then, of course, I'm proud also to have just helped pass the Inflation Reduction Act, which is going to cap the price of prescription drugs for our seniors on Medicare, like my grandmother, which is one of the reasons I ran for Congress in the first place, as well as invest in climate action in the way this nation has ever seen. I'm excited to keep doing the work of saving our democracy, and I'm keeping, keeping an eye towards the future as well. Well, we hope we get to see more of you uh, on this network. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to say uh, we hope to see you run again, but if you decide to get back in the ring, uh, you'll certainly have a fan in me, my friend. Congressman uh, Mondaire Jones, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you.